Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Tonight we're going to see some more pop up showers, but as we get closer to the weekend, it is the heat we'll be talking about. Chief Meteorologist Paige Noel joins us now with more on what to expect over the next few days. Paige. Yeah, Steve, I know a lot of people have been complaining about the rain lately, but really enjoy it now because as we head into the end of the work week, it's really going to become hot, and that's why we have that excessive heat watch. I'll show you guys that in just a second. Some good news is we're starting to see a little bit of clearing out to parts of a western or really our western counties. You can see that here on Interstate 75. They're starting to see a little bit of breaks in the clouds, and even here in Hazard, we're starting to dry out just a little bit. Temperatures near 80, so not too bad out there. Definitely feeling a little bit warmer, though, feeling like 85 due to those dew points definitely being on the muggy side. But the remnants of Hurricane Barry, or once known Hurricane Barry, is continuing to push into our area. That low pressure system is just to the north of us, which is why we've seen those scattered showers. But there's the little bit of clearing that you're seeing. We're hanging on to a few of those pop-ups. You're noticing mostly into our eastern counties now, moving off to the east into parts of Virginia and into West Virginia. Of course, we're going to hang on to those scattered chances tonight and a little bit into your Thursday as well. So you see those temperatures starting to warm out. If you look out par into parts of our western counties, you're seeing those low to mid 80s, even at 86 in Richmond. Still those 70s for those areas, seeing cloud cover and rain. If you're looking down into parts of Harlan, over into Wise, and even into Pikeville as well. But there's that excessive heat watch that has been issued. Now this doesn't go into effect until about noon on your Friday and last until 8 p.m. on your Saturday. I'll break down the full forecast though coming up, to, coming up in just a few short minutes, Steve. All right, Paige, thank you. Some people in Hazard spent part of today without water. WYMT's Madison Pergram is at the location of the water break. People along North Main Street here were left without water after an old water line broke earlier today. The break caused city workers to shut down two water valves. Workers say this likely affected people from Old Crow Tire to Hard Burley. Several hazard utility crews were part of the process to get things back up and running, including water, sewer, and gas departments. Water distribution worker Cameron Skeen says there are many factors as to why this could happen, including ground movement throughout the summer and the condition of the lines. Just old lines in the ground. They, we, we need new lines. That's what it is, is old lines. City workers tell us that the water line is now fixed. In Hazard, Madison Pergram, WYNT Mountain News. City workers say during the past few summers they have seen water line breaks more often. A Whitley County mother charged in a high profile murder case will appear back in court in October. Courtney Taylor is accused of killing her daughters and husband. Court officials tell us today her defense lawyers filed a motion to suppress an interview with police. The judge will rule on that during the next 30 days. Her trial is currently set for next March. Today we learned of a new way to help a Leslie County family who lost their home in a fire. Earlier this month, the Baker family lost everything. Luckily, the family of five made it out unharmed. A fundraiser is set for July 30th from 5 p.m. until 8 at the McDonald's on Citizen Lane here in Hazard. A portion of sales during those hours will go to the family. There's also an account set up at Community Trust Bank where you can donate. In Pike County, a simple slice of warm pizza could help local veterans stay warm during a military honors funeral. WIMT's Buddy Forbes has more about a partnership between Five Star Pizza and People's Natural Gas that is helping local organizations. Five Star Pizza is working with People's Natural Gas to give back to Pike County. And the program is about supporting our local businesses and also highlighting um, local charities. As the restaurant is serving pizza, People's Gas is serving the community. For every pizza purchased here at Five Star Pizza, um, People's gave a dollar back to the community. Wednesday, that giving was directed to Johns Creek's disabled American veterans. We're the ones that mainly do the honors here in Pike County, and we do them in all kinds of weather, so we're trying to get weather gear for our, for our people. So after 1,000 pizzas were purchased from Five Star, People's Gas stepped in. We're going to check for $1,000 to dis disable American veterans. But the donation that will go toward funding all weather gear for the DAV chapter. It means a lot to us. Our people, as I say, are getting older. We've got one man in his 90s. And without the all weather gear, we're standing out in the rain or the snow and uh, sleet, and it's just miserable on us. Beverly Wogan says the ability to give back is one of the blessings of the program. The small business is what built our communities, and I think this is a great way to get people to start thinking shop local um, and support your local charities as well. And Richard Harvey says the donation goes a long way in helping the DAV with its mission. Our biggest goal is just take care of our vets. They've earned it. 
The vets that have passed on have earned honors. As the program gives back to those who gave so much to serve their country. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WIMT Mountain News. This partnership is an ongoing effort and has donated to places like the Pike County Animal Shelter in the past. Wogan says Craig Goff, the owner of Five Star Pizza, chooses which charity will benefit from the project. Yesterday, we told you that the Jared Lorenzo Memorial Fund was at more than $80,000. The fund is set up by the Kentucky Sports Radio guys and host Matt Jones. Jones and Lorenzen were friends until his death last week. The money will go to the Lorenzen family to help in any way it can, something that Jones says is the most important thing. I knew Kentucky fans would step up and, and help support him, but I, I was shocked at the amount. I mean, it's almost $90,000 now. It's really been amazing. Now, my goal was to, to raise 50 for the family, and I think we'll probably get closer to 100. So it's been awesome, and it's, it shows how generous this fan base is and how much Jared really meant to everybody. You can still contribute to the Jared Lorenzen Memorial Fund. You can find out how on our website, WIMT.com. Police in Orem, Utah, say a tragic accident left a little girl dead. The six-year-old died after a golf ball hit her head. Police say the young girl was sitting in a golf cart about 20 yards away from where her father was teeing off. The ball he hit went off course and hit her head at the base of her neck. She was flown to the hospital but died from the injury. Advocates hope a shocking death can spark change for the deaf community. Connie Dodson died last week and she was deaf. Friends believe she accidentally left her car with keyless ignition running in the garage while she slept inside her home. The coroner's office says it's possible she died of carbon monoxide poisoning. The state commission on the deaf and hard of hearing say this is not the first time that's happened. Garrett Weimer reports. Many cars start with the turn of a key and the roar of an engine. But for those who are deaf or hard of hearing, there's no roar. And with more and more cars now starting and stopping with the push of a button instead, they say there's little to let them know whether they actually turned it off once they pull in to park. Is this very little bitty light that you can barely see in my car. And of course, it's not something you see clearly, and I don't hear it. I'm profoundly deaf. Folks at the Kentucky Commission on the Deaf and Hard of Hearing say they really started looking into the issue after the death of one of their fellow advocates. Connie Dotson was a deaf leader. They found story after story from across the country. Tragic accident kills a couple. Even heard many similar stories at their friend's funeral. So our question is, how many deaths have to happen? How many people have to die with the carbon monoxide before they realize this? The commission says there are roughly 700,000 Kentuckians who are deaf or hard of hearing. That's why they say something needs to be done. They want car manufacturers to make it easier to know the car is shut off when someone's not in it. When you have a fob that will recognize me in the car and when I walk out, why doesn't it just, why doesn't the ignition just go shut down? Advocates say they know some deaf folks so scared about making sure their cars turn off, they won't even park in their garages. Looking back, they know it's too late to save some, but they hope a fix isn't far down the road. They have to do a recall or something because this is an issue that has to be addressed. Garrett Weimer, WYMT Mountain News. The state commission says a lot of technology has been a huge help for the deaf community, but when it comes to some things like cars with keyless ignition, they want folks to be aware of the ramifications of it. Coming up on Mountain News at 530, community support is still pouring in for those miners impacted by the Black Jewel bankruptcy case. And after we get that rain out of here, the heat and humidity definitely increasing lower 90s, feeling a lot warmer though. I'll have the rest of those details coming up in just a few short minutes. He's an Eastern Kentucky native and he's a sports radio superstar. Coming up, hear from Matt Jones and the speculation around if he will run for U.S. Senate.